I want to introduce you to our new unit on Japan. A lot of young Americans seem to be fascinated with Japan. Every summer I work with uh, freshmen at orientation at UNCG and so many of them want to take Japanese as their foreign language. And I think this has a lot to do with the influence of Japanese culture in the United States. A lot of us <clears throat> have been exposed to Japanese culture through food, do you like sushi? Uh, through technology, do you have a Sony television? Do you play video games, PlayStation, Nintendo, these things come from, from Japan. Uh, if you've ever folded up paper and made birds and things, that's origami, that's Japanese. If you've ever watched sumo wrestling, that's Japanese. Um, and then a lot of students, especially younger students here in this country, fascinated with anime and samurai culture. These are all Japanese things. So, obviously, we have a lot of familiarity with Japanese culture, and I want to talk a little bit about Japan going into the 1800s. So, remember with China, I said that in 1800, China started a transition to not being so dominant. Up until about 1800, China was dominant, and after 1800, it started to decline. Well, with Japan, Japan was not dominant in 1800. Japan is geographically a small island off the east coast of China, and Japan just was not dominant militarily, technologically, and these kinds of things. Ch Japan, Japan had been one of China's tributes for centuries. So Japan was certainly not dominant. Uh, but what you're going to find out as we go through this unit is that Japan became dominant throughout the 1800s and into the early 1900s was really a force to be reckoned with. So, a little background briefly. Going into the 1800s, Japan was a shogunate. So, not to try to confuse you here, but in the 1600s, a man by the name of Tokugawa Ayasu created the Tokugawa shogunate. And really a shogunate is just a system of government in which the shogun rules the country. There had been emperors in Japan for a long time, and under the Tokugawa shogunate, there was still an emperor, but the emperor was more of a figurehead than an executive leader of the country. So, Tokugawa became the first shogun in Japan, and that's the system of government that you find in Japan in the early 1800s. Now, Tokugawa did not want to isolate Japan from the rest of the world. He wanted to trade with China, and he wanted to trade with any other Western powers that might be in the Pacific Ocean. At that point, in the 1600s, it was mostly the Dutch that the Japanese traded with, but he was still open to trading. But he encountered a problem, and that was Christianity. So Tokugawa was not a fan of Christianity. He felt like it was a threat to Japanese culture and ideals. And so he banned Christianity in 1650. That ban was not lifted until 1873. So Japan was not friendly to Christians for uh, a couple of centuries there. But in terms of Japanese religion, whereas the Chinese were primarily influenced by Confucianism, Japan has influences from Confucianism, Buddhism, and Shinto. And I'm just going to touch on Shinto because that one is more unique to Japan. The, the big thing you need to know about Shinto is that the, the primary deity in Shinto is Amaterasu, who is the sun goddess. Now, and she's supposedly the creator of the world in Japanese Shinto tradition. The thing you have to know about Amaterasu and Shinto in Japanese history is that According to Japanese tradition, every emperor was a descendant of Amaterasu, which meant every emperor was godlike. So I just need you to understand that. That plays a huge role in relationships between Japan and the United States going into the, uh, the 20th century. So, again, 
This, sec this unit is broken up into sections very much like the China unit. We have Japan in the 1800s. We have Japan from 1900 to 1945 when World War II ended. And we have Japan since 1945, especially how it interacted with the United States and the West. Again, more primary sources. Uh, look over those and start talking about your impressions of those sources on the discussion board under Japan. So I look forward to reading what you have to say, and as always, contact me if you have questions.